Buongiorno amici miei, Adam Cleary here from 442, literally in Italy right now, honest, and Newcastle United have signed Sandro Tonali. And that has led to what we here in Italy call Noioso Discorso Su Internet. He's massively overpriced, he's massively overhyped, his passing's not that good, his stats are weirdly inflated, he wasn't even that important to Milan in the first place, he can't play the number six role, he's just Sean Longstaff with nicer hair, yada yada yada, stai zitto. Sandro Tonali. Tonali is an absolutely sensational bit of business for Newcastle United and the fact that there isn't one singular obvious thing he's going to bring to this team is not a problem, it's precisely why they've bought him. For some reason, everything's just a bigger deal and demands more scrutiny when it's Newcastle United. And because people can't quite figure out exactly what it is Tonali's going to bring to this team, all of a sudden, it's a bad buy. So who is Sandro Tonali? Well, you probably know already by now, he's 23-year-old, vice-captain of AC Milan, devilishly good-looking. He's won Serie A, he's played in the Champions League, he drags the Italian youth sides kicking and screaming to the midpoint of most competitions and he was supposed to be the new Andrea Pirlo. One of the main criticisms he gets in Italy, which you're going to start hearing over here, is that he's already not reaching his obvious potential because he isn't the new Andrea Pirlo. He hasn't got the passing range to be him. And the reason people say he's not the new Andrea Pirlo, the reason his passing's not as good is because his numbers, frankly, suck. Like, for Milan, Tonali either plays as one of two double pivots in like a 4-2-3-1 system or he plays as either the right or left-hand side eight in a 4-3-3. And what you would expect for a player in either of those two positions, like think of Bruno at Newcastle, is really high pass completion percentages. But Tonali, if we look at the numbers, has incredibly, incredibly low pass completion percentages. Like on the face of that, he's one of the worst passers in European football. But the reason for this is Tonali does not do the bulk of his passing in these sort of areas. He prefers to progress the ball up the pitch with his running. He's one of the best progressive carriers in Syria. That means when he gets on the ball, when he's looking to make passes, they're normally in the final third, where naturally they're of a much lower percentage. Like if we just take those passing stats and then we combine them with his goal creating actions and his shot creating actions, you can see that he contributes an awful lot to the chances Milan are creating despite completing very few passes. And what that means is his passing numbers are far more similar to an attacking player than they are to a midfield player because his job is to hit killer balls, to hit final passes, which by their very nature come off far less. Like in particular here, one of the key things about playing a number six role, which people have talked about and potentially doing for Newcastle, is you probably need quite good long passes. You want to be able to switch the play or to just make things happen out of nowhere, and he attempts an awful lot of them and makes almost none. And this is a good example, actually, of how statistics can paint a slightly misleading picture, because you've been in a football match, I'm willing to bet. You've seen this happen. A player gets on the ball in this sort of bit of space. He spots his teammate making a brilliant run in one of the channels, and he plays a sensational 80-yard pass right into this tiny little area of space that just, for whatever reason, skips up off the turf and goes out on a goalie, scrambles out and puts out for a throw in and what does the entire stadium do? What do you do? You applaud the hell out of that ball. What a pass that nearly was. But from a purely statistical standpoint, it's just another incomplete pass. It's a mark against him. It's as worthwhile as if he just booted it out near the corner flag, slicing it with his with his weaker foot. Tonali is attempting so many of these long passes because he has excellent vision to spot them. He's just not making a high percentage of them because A, they're really hard to make and B, He's 23. That's a part of a game he's still developing. And you see, this is at the very heart of why Newcastle have bought Sandro Tonali. Because the whole conversation so far has been, well, he's not a natural number six, so Bruno's definitely going to still play there. He'll just end up replacing Longstaff in that number eight role. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't play him ahead of Bruno in that number six role. But to say he can't play there isn't accurate. And likewise, to say he's just like a luxury version of Sean Longstaff, that he's an improvement in that position, yeah, that is probably accurate, but he's a very different player to Sean Longstaff at the same time. I probably would start him there ahead of Sean Longstaff, but there are games where Longstaff's skill set will be more important. Like, as every Newcastle fan discovered last year, Longstaff is incredibly important to the way this system functions. Like, the way he finds the spaces, the way he makes overlapping runs, the way he just basically makes every other player's job so much easier is vital to how they play. The one sort of remaining criticism of Longstaff is that for all his good movement and all his good work, there are frequently times where he finds himself in a very dangerous position and for whatever reason doesn't turn that into a chance. He doesn't maximise the potential of that situation. And if we look at his numbers here for shot creating actions and goal creating actions, it's the one part of his game that's majorly lacking. And it's in this pocket of space here that he so often finds himself as the spare man but just isn't able 
to do anything with it. Like if you cast your minds back to the Fulham game, he puts in a great cross to the back post because the movement around him has left him loads and loads of room, but we just didn't see that enough. Far more common was him getting the ball in this area, being a bit indecisive or just moving it sideways. But you get Tenali in this area with a bit of space and that, my friends, is a spicy meatball. And that brings me nicely to the ultimate point with all of this, right? That was quite a fortunate goal Newcastle scored in that game against Fulham. That looked like being just another example and there was many across the season where teams were able to frustrate them, where they refused to play them and they ground out some kind of result. Newcastle were great at playing teams that wanted to play them. They were less good at playing teams that didn't want to play them. And the reason for that is because they are still punching so far above their actual weight. Like this team, this team that got into the Champions League places still has so many players that look like they were sliding down into the championship, not two seasons ago. They do not have the luxury that a lot of clubs around them do of sometimes turning up, not being at the races, getting your tactics wrong and still winning games of football because the overall quality of your players just tells. Newcastle United, under Eddie Howe, win games because they get things absolutely spot on and when they don't get things absolutely spot on, they just don't win games. And the main problem Eddie Howe has in that regard is it's very difficult for him to change things mid-game. If you think back to last season, every time they had a bad run of form, we'd get them on the training ground and over a number of weeks, he would figure that out and he would he would turn it around. I did a video on the channel, I'll, I'll link it somewhere, where they stopped pressing as high to try and encourage teams to come out a bit because that was just how people were playing again. Anyway, I digress. Basically, he's very good at doing things on the training ground. He does not have the luxury of changing things on the pitch. That's because the basic rule of football is the most effective place to make changes in a game is in your midfield. But Newcastle's midfielders play such important specific roles, you can't really remove one of them without the entire system sort of falling away. And for this whole system to work as effectively as it does, you need the direct running of Joe Willock to be able to carry the ball out of deep areas and move it into the attacking third. You need Bruno to be able to get on the ball, dictate the play and take other players out of the equation, either by beating them themselves or playing passes that take them out of the game. And Longstaff, his ability to cover the space, to recognise the gaps, keeps the whole thing really solid. Obviously, occasionally you will see Joe Linton in that role instead of on the left-hand side, and he provides a bit of steel, makes things a little bit more solid, but he's not a dramatic change to anything else that's going on. He's still going to occupy those positions Willick does when he gets in the final third. And this is exactly why Tenali was Eddie Howe's number one target, because he has the work rate and the energy and the ability to recognise space that Sean Longstaff does, but he also adds a far more creative element in those areas of the pitch. He has the direct running and the ball carrying abilities of Joe Willock. He can turn defence into attack the same way he does, but again, he can be more creative around the edge of the box if he needs to. He is not going to start ahead of Bruno in the sixth position so that he can play in the eighth, but he's good enough there that you can make that change mid-game. If Bruno's getting marked out, if he's not very effective, you can swap them round and allow him to get into more dangerous areas, to evade markers, to surprise teams, to pop up in different positions, to impact the game and the attacking third more than he normally does. Like, think about how good he was when he first signed. It's because he was playing in those advanced positions because we had John Joe Shelby there who could keep all that ticking over. Tonali will allow you that degree of flexibility without costing you what Bruno gives that position. And also, arguably, he's better in the tackle. So there'll even be phases when you're defending where it's better to have him there. And I've even seen people making the point that, oh, he's really good at set pieces, but what's the point in getting him? Because Kieran Trippier is going to take all of those. Like, it's not in Kieran Trippier's contract that he would take every single corner and free kick. Newcastle have worked on so many really clever set-piece routines. Having another player over the ball who you conceivably believe will be putting this cross in gives them so many options. He will take a really high number of those dead balls. So why have they spent so much money on him? Why did Eddie Howe want him so badly? Well, it's not because he's Sean Longstaff, because he's not, and he's not Joe Willock either, and he's not Bruno, and he's not Kieran Trippier, but he has really important attributes that all of these players possess, meaning that Newcastle will, for the first time, be able to be really tactically flexible mid-game. Think about it this way, right? Just like last season, teams are going to turn up at St. James's Park, and they're going to have all the answers, right? But what Tenali enables you to do for the very first time is change the questions. And just as one quick final point, I think it's going to be really worthwhile keeping in mind across the season, right? These criticisms of him are valid. He's nowhere near the finished article yet. But if Newcastle want to add world-class players to their squad, 
they can't go and buy the finished articles. FFP stops them doing that. Instead, what they have to do is identify players they think can be world class, but that for whatever reason, other clubs just aren't convinced on yet and bring them in and develop them just like they've done with Botman, just like they've done with Bruno, just like they've done with Isak. Tonali is in that kind of bracket. So yes, anyway, if you think he's just come in to replace Sean Longstaff, then no. And if you think you can't play the number six or Bruno stuck there forever, then also no. But I mean, far more important than that, what do you what do you make of him? Like, I'm not an AC Milan season ticket holder. I just have BT Sport and no girlfriend. So yeah, in the comments, please. And of course, while you're here, whoosh, the new 442 available now from all good retailers and the crap ones too. It's the Lioness special ahead of the Women Euros. It's really, really good. In the meantime, though, thank you very much for watching. Please do get me on Twitter at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y. How are you, the lads, etc., etc. I have not been this excited about a transfer in a very long time. So please don't embarrass me, will you? You're not real. Anyway, ciao.